Question. If I asked you to prove to me that you were a safe driver, how would you do it? Would you point to how long you've been driving without a crash? Maybe how many miles you'd driven? Or maybe you'd tell me about some risky moments you'd navigated and survived? Well, that conundrum, how to prove that you're safe, is exactly what autonomous driving companies are trying to solve right now. Let me explain. See, you may have seen driverless vehicles out practicing on real roads, as these companies try and teach their self-driving algorithms to deal with as many different challenges as possible. And in that process, some of them have had accidents. But the problem is, no matter how many real-world miles they drive, it's unlikely they'll encounter some of the weird, rare events that they're trying to test against. And some, they really wouldn't want to. These incidents are called edge cases, once-in-a-lifetime events that might completely throw off a driverless algorithm if it isn't trained properly. So to get round this conundrum, autonomous driving companies are building simulated driving schools where their AI can safely drive billions of miles and learn to deal with some of the most bizarre scenarios you'd ever find on the road. So what do virtual driving schools look like, and what kind of tests are they running? Well, to find out a little bit more about simulation, I got in touch with autonomous trucking company Aurora. After all, they've created this simulated environment. Yep, this isn't real. We realized that if we were going to actually ship a self-driving vehicle, we couldn't just drive a bunch of miles on the road. If you look at the rate at which people have accidents, it's low enough that if you really want to understand it, you're going to have to simulate it. That's Chris Hermson, Aurora's CEO, who told me that they hired physicists and even Academy Award-winning software engineers to create their perception training environment. We've built an engine that is hyper-realistic, uh, but incredibly repeatable. The idea is that their algorithm, the Aurora driver, thinks that it's in the real world, but its sensors are actually connected to this simulated environment, where Aurora can load a whole different range of problems for the truck to try and perceive. Now, this perception environment is actually one of the more detailed training environments that Aurora uses. But the company also uses far simpler ones to allow them to test vehicle logic and decision making at a rapid pace. So we can spin up um, the equivalent of 50,000 trucks. And if something interesting happens out there, we're able to convert that real world thing into a simulation. And it's not just Aurora, far from it. Driverless companies like Waymo and Cruise also have their own simulators too, as well as startups like Wabi, who have created a simulation engine that allows them to drop fake vehicles into real world environments and even have those vehicles react to the actions of the algorithm itself, creating a virtual feedback loop. But here's the interesting question. Once you've built a virtual environment that can test against edge cases, which edge cases do you test against? After all, in a virtual world, you could program literally anything to happen. You could make elephants fall from the sky. But if you tested your algorithm against literally everything, you'd waste a lot of time and computing power testing against things that were statistically impossible. Well, one company who believes that they have the answer to that question is London-based startup DRISC. DRISC isn't making an autonomous vehicle, but they're trying to create a comprehensive map of edge cases that autonomous vehicle algorithms can test and improve against. To understand what that actually means, I sat down with DRISC's CEO, Chess Stetson. What we do is first catalog everything that can happen. And we do that by taking data from all the sources that can tell us about real life accidents. So we have roughly a million hours of camera data from a variety of locations. Uh, we've got hundreds of thousands of accident reports. We have um, thousands of reports that we got from individual contributors. We put them in one massive catalog, which is called a knowledge graph. And then we pipe those into simulation. Now, the edge cases that D-Risk have catalogued are certainly odd. Things like porta potties falling off trucks or picnic tables in the middle of highways. The idea is that driverless vehicle companies could plug these edge cases into their simulators to test against them. D-Risk can then assess how well the algorithm handled certain types of scenarios. And because the company groups similar but different edge cases, they can see if the algorithm truly understands how to handle a problem, or if it's only able to solve the one scenario it was given. Literally, the difference between knowing and understanding. The company hopes that that means that their data could be used to help create an autonomous driving test, something that currently doesn't exist. And the hope is that this testing environment that we've built will end up being used to always test every new generation of a self-driving car. Now, training against porta potties and picnic tables in the road may seem a tad pointless. After all, these events are supposed to be niche, once in a lifetime incidents. But Chess believes that by solving the hard problems, you automatically solve the easy ones. If you can learn to thread a needle, 
then it's really easy to thread a basketball hoop, but not vice versa. So does this ever mean we could hit a point where driverless cars don't need to test or practice on real roads, and those crash statistics could become a thing of the past? Well, according to Chess, it's possible. I think that is exactly the premise, that you shouldn't need to test in an open road when you deploy it because you should be so confident in its behavior. But Aurora's Chris Emerson views things a different way. So we think you need to be doing both. And I think this is very akin to the way that we develop cars today. Most of the crash testing for a vehicle happens in simulation. And then we do some small amount of testing in the real world to validate it. One thing is certain though. As autonomous vehicle companies try and develop their self-driving algorithms, their cars are going to keep encountering weird stuff, both off and on the road. We'll